What's going on YouTube? This is Ricky J. Holy cow, man. I am pretty pumped up for this video because <laughs> EA Sports UFC 4 just added some prime icon fighters, which are, you know, you gotta say, man, they're obviously legendary fighters, but these are fighters in their prime. The stats are going to replicate their abilities in their prime, and they added Habib, GSP, Anderson Silva. For me, I think this good, Ricky, big sport. Um, they added a uh, Michael Bisbing, Alistair Overeem, and Joanna Jan Jacek. So I thought, why not come on here and do something a little creative, man? I'm going to do a prime icon simulation tournament. Obviously, you can't use females if you're going to use the males. So we're going to use the five new prime icon fighters. It's going to be Habib, obviously GSP, Anderson, Bisbing and Overeem, all right? And we're gonna see what happens. If you see here on your screen, you're seeing Lentz, you're seeing Sam Alvey, and you're seeing Punk. Just because what I wanna do is I wanna simulate those fights. I'm not gonna show you those fights. And um, I'm gonna hope and pray that Anderson Silva beats CM Punk, Overeem beats Alvey. Basically, they're getting a buy into the next round. But for this video, we are going to lace it up, man. Is that the right word? That's a Canadian term. Lace it up when you want to go play hockey. But we're going to, I don't know what. I don't know what the term is. Buckle up? Yeah, buckle up. Because we have a crazy showdown right here. It's the rematch for the middleweight title. It's Bisbing versus GSP. And this is Prime Icon. Both guys in their prime, kicking butt and taking names. I cannot wait to see what happens. So we are just going to let the computer, man, let the AI sort things out. And we're going to do just one fight for this episode, all right? Here we go, man. Let's start this tournament. Hold on. Sorry, that was my bad right there. Let's start this tournament right here. And it's GSP Bisbing. And obviously, man, if you've been following me for a long time, you know that George St. Pierre is my favorite mixed martial artist of all time. Holy cow. What a fantastic career he had. Both guys had an amazing career. But GSP coming in from Canada, you know, I'm Canadian, um, you know, when he fought in the UFC, they didn't really give him a lot of respect. I remember Joe Rogan when GSP fought against, um, holy cow, Jason Mayhem Miller. Rogan was like talking up a storm how Mayhem is light years beyond GSP on the mat. And GSP won that. Look at GSP's attire. That's crazy. Where's the design on his headband, man? What, what is that? It's pretty basic. I want to see... The actual design, but that's all good. Um, but even when he fought Carl Parisian, you know, Joe Rogan was saying how GSP is not going to be able to hang with Caro. He destroyed him. But just seeing his rise was um, so amazing, especially, you know, he's a Canadian guy. We didn't have a lot of, you know, great Canadian fighters in the UFC back then. It was nice to follow a guy and seeing him go right to the top. And you know my story when he... Uh, Lost to Matt Hughes the first time wasn't that devastating for me, but when he lost to Matt Sarah, it was pretty devastating. But seeing him rebound from that and, you know, just do so many good things after that loss and taking that loss as a learning curve or taking that, that loss as a, you know, in a, a kind of like a moment that changed his career, his prep, preparation for fights, it was great to see. Um, but as far as Bisbing's concerned, what a grinder, man. He is my opinion the true definition of never giving up because you know he won the ultimate fighter and then he kind of had some tough fights holy cow that knockout that hendo holy cow man. hendo didn't need to do that <laughs> he was already done but um you know he had some wins had some losses and continued to work at it and then finally got the title against rockhold and i remember that was a rematch and he you know <laughs> never doubted his skills <laughs> holy cow never doubting his skills but what's this they they gotta change the age if this is prime gsp you know i would recommend that they change the age prime gsp in my opinion was when he was 27 years old um i would say when he fought john fitch you know the matt Sarah fight or when he beat bj penn that's the prime GSP 27 28 so I wish they would change the age you know what I mean let me know if you agree with that but well, here we go man 
This is one and done, by the way. This is one and done. So I'm on the edge of my seat. I've done this before. And GSP has never done well in any of my tournaments. So I'm hoping he's going to do well. And uh, I'll just... I'm in, a sto I'm in story mode today, man. I'm in story mode. But when GSP was fighting in the UFC, I would legit shake during his fights. And leading up to his fights, I would always make sure... You know, to watch every single interview. And when he was on a winning streak, I had an old phone. And I wouldn't upgrade the phone because I was convinced that that f phone was giving GSP good luck. <laughs> it's terrible, man. It was terrible. I don't know what's up with my superstitions. But um, I had had that same phone for like seven years. And people were like, dude, you're stuck in the like early 2000s. Get a new phone. I'm like, nah, man. This phone's helping GSP go on a win streak. But here we go. Speaking of win streak... Let's see if George can take out Bisbing here in this Prime Icon. Oh, what are you doing? Prime Icon tournament. And I've done these tournaments before, man, like I said. And it's just so much fun kicking back and talking MMA and, you know, sharing stories with you guys. So this is great. And look at this. We're seeing GSP in Southpaw, man. This is interesting. Oh, nice head movement. And look at George. Huh? <laughs> Throwing the mixed bag of mixed martial arts <laughs> at Bisbing. Bisbing was always so good at, at getting up, man. Wall walking, getting up, using those hips. Oh, he doesn't get up right here. But GSP was just so good, in my opinion, at just improving as a wrestler. And he never had any, like, wrestling background in school. Look at this. Nice ground and pound. Um, he never really had any wrestling background in school. Um, but he worked at it. The one thing I loved about George's training is that he went to various different gyms to train in different disciplines. And he wrestled with these amazing Russian wrestlers. And they really showed him the ropes. And look at this. His wrestling is... Remember when he did that to BJ Penn? Holy cow. BJ just couldn't do a thing, man. BJ was just exhausted. Couldn't do a thing. And look at this. Quick submission right here in Bisbing's... You know, his uh, stamina is pretty low right here. Is it going to end? It looks like Bisbing's going to get out. You never know, man. I really feel like in this game sometimes you get halfway to the uh, escape bar and then it just it goes so slow. This is going to drain Bisbing right here. Is he going to get out? Looks like he's going to get out. You know, I wanted to say one of the most incredible moments of George's career was, in my opinion, after that loss against Matt Serra when he fought... Josh Koscheck at, what was it, UFC 74. He was a co-headline for Randy Couture and Gabriel Gonzaga. And um, he out-wrestled Koscheck. And it was funny, Koscheck being that Div 1 NCAA champion, he thought that GSP had no chance at out-wrestling him. And it was so cool seeing GSP. And look at this, crazy ground and pound. Bisbing just doesn't know what to do right here. This is crazy. And again, these are five-star fighters, man. So these are... You know, fighters in this game that are not completely maxed, but they're um, they're pretty close. So this is interesting. And this is one thing that George said before these guys actually fought. And he said that we had a training session, and George St. Pierre just totally outgrappled Bisping, and he's doing it right here. Good little round. Oh, gets the mount. Gets the denial. <laughs> What's going to happen right here? Is he going for it? Oh my gosh. Is he going for it? Oh, and he ran out of time. Well, that's a great round but for GSP. Using all the tools in his toolkit, man, to basically stifle the offense of Bisbing. That's, uh, that's some pretty interesting stuff, man. That's crazy. Maybe uh, Bisbing's going to start throwing a little bit more, but... I like the um, the the shorts. Um, as far as George's shorts, you know, I don't know. I don't really remember him. I remember him wearing blue, what, Koscheck 2? But I would have loved to see him in that um, black and gold that he used to wear, you know, or black and silver tights. But here we go. St. Pierre establishing the center of the ring, looking to see... What Bisbing's going to do. And let me know in the comments if you want me to switch future fights to five rounds. I think I'm going to do that. 
But for the opening round, we're only doing three rounds. And, um, yeah. <laughs> see what happens right here. This is what Bisbing needs to do. When Bisbing, Bisbing kind of reminds me of like Forrest Griff and Stefan Bonner. You know, he's got to take his licks a little bit. And once he starts taking those licks, man, that's when he absolutely starts to, you know, come into his own. Starts fighting at his potential, in my opinion. He just needs uh, to get that second win, get a couple of shots, <laughs> or receive some shots to kind of wake up. This is cool what we're seeing here. The AI GSP switching stances. He's got to be careful. Great overhand there by Bisbig. <laughs> this is hilarious. It's so fun doing these tournaments. I have such joy doing them. Holy cow. George is tentative, man. George, you just had an incredible first round. And now... He's frozen like his statue. Oh my gosh, did you guys see his statue? <laughs> they put a statue up in Montreal. Oh no, no, don't do it. And uh, oh, hold on, the statue looks like Barack Obama. <laughs> and I couldn't understand it when he was taking the photo. Holy cow, it was Obama, man, it wasn't GSP. But look at this, George is in trouble. I'm surprised that uh, the fight didn't get stopped right here, but this is where GSP needs to clear the cobwebs. Uh-oh. Oh, nice. Good denial. Another good denial. Just like when he fought Condit. Remember when Condit hit him up with that 1-2 and that weird-looking roundhouse kick where Condit kind of dips his uh, shoulder down, his neck down to the side and throws that, that roundhouse kick that you can't really see coming? George thought he was resetting. And George got clocked with one, but he did a great job at recovering. And look at this. How the tide has just turned right here. GSP looking to flatten him out. Bisbing says no way. George is taking his time here. I like that. GSP is taking his time. Oh, he gets the denial. That's big right there. And I'll never forget when George <laughs> fought Matt Hughes <laughs> for the third time. Matt Hughes wouldn't let go of that grip in mount, and GSP was playing basketball with his head. And look at this. Is he going to get the submission? And you know what's funny? This is what GSP did to Matt Hughes and what Matt Hughes did to George in the first fight. You guys remember that? Holy cow. I'm talking a mile a minute, but when GSP fought Matt Hughes for the first time, George was actually winning the fight. And then he did something silly where he left his arm out, and at the buzzer... Matt Hughes tapped him out with an armbar, and I always wondered, man, GSP should have just hung on for a couple of seconds. Um, but he tapped right away, and Big John McCarthy came in um, and stopped and stopped the fight. But GSP, I always would say, man, just if you could have hung on for a little bit longer, you may have won that first fight, destroyed Matt Hughes in the second fight, and obviously in the third fight. And you guys remember in that third fight, GSP was stepping in for Matt Sarah. You guys remember that? Matt Sarah got injured, and it was a fight in December. And a lot of people said that uh, <laughs> GSP was the welterweight that saved Christmas because uh, it was an even better fight, in my opinion, than the Sarah Matt Hughes fight. So it was GSP Hughes 3 for the interim title. Crazy stuff. So here we go, man. This is anybody's fight, in my opinion. GSP needs to do this. Um, he really has to secure this round. Oh, nice. I was going to say, you got to be so careful with Bisbing. He's so good at getting up. It's so funny. My buddies <laughs> would always make fun of me for just, uh, you know, loving GSP. And he, they used to say that when George got knocked out by Matt Serra, his nickname should be George Safe Pierre because he always, you know, puts the, gets the fight in... Um, you know, in areas that will make him win, and that's a safe place for him not to get knocked out. But look at this, GSP giving up position to try to get the armbar. I don't know if that was the best move, man. Especially when his head health is kind of compromised. And this is going to gain Bisbing some points with the judges, man. Let's see if, uh, George, you can tell I'm a little biased. <laughs> you can tell I'm a little biased here. Oh, is he going to get... Oh, I'm telling you, that's a dominant position. Oh, what a beautiful sweep right there. Great reversal. Oh, and you can't turtle. 
But George using that great wrestling base. Oh man. And GSP used to have the great the greatest reversals. I don't know if it was against Pete Spratt, but he did one reversal where he moved one leg over, used momentum from his other leg to gain the sweep. It was almost almost looked like he was doing a, a flare like in breakdancing. It's pretty crazy. But right here, look at Bisbing. Trying to hang on, trying to get this fight back on the feet. But Prime Icon George is pretty relentless. I don't think he's going to get it. You know what I got to say, though? I wish they made this Prime Icon GSP a little more lean. Um, and I really feel like GSP used to do some fake and baking where he would tan before fights. They should have made him a little bit darker, in my opinion. A little bit darker, a little more lean. I feel like he's looks a little too chunky in this game. And um, when George was 26, 27, 28, he was... He had the best physique in MMA, in my opinion. And you're just not seeing that in this prime icon, GSP. <laughs> Let me know your thoughts on that. But look at this. He got his back. And this fight is done. And it's going to go to the judges right here. Let's see what happens before we end off this first episode. I think GSP did enough. He had a little bit of a scare in that second round. But I think he did enough. And remember, the winner of this fight faces Habib, which is crazy. The winner of this fight, imagine, GSP Habib. We didn't see it in real life, but we're going to see Prime George versus Prime Habib. Here we go. What's going to happen? Who's it going to be? Oh, George gets a decision. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> One final thing. Remember I was talking about my buddies? They would make fun of me that GSP couldn't finish a fight. I remember one guy said to me, he's like, Hey, Rick, it's GSP's birthday, and guess what? He couldn't finish his cake. <laughs> so bad. But anyways, guys, I'll end off this video. Hope you enjoyed the first fight. Holy cow. The next one, it's going to be Habib versus George once again. Lentz is just there as a pylon for <laughs> Habib to just take out, all right? So, I don't know. Maybe I'll show you highlights of that fight real quick. And then remember, on the other side of the bracket, Silva is going to eat Punk alive, and he's going to face Overeem. So it's going to be, well, Overeem's going to destroy Alvi just because they only added, like I said in the beginning of the video, you know, five male prime icon fighters. But anyways, guys, have a great day. Hopefully you enjoyed this first episode. I'll catch you in the next one. This is Ricky J, baby, from Ricky J Sports. Love you guys. I'm out of here. Peace.